Hello everyone, we're back in the shed again. It's been a little while since we've been in here, to be quite honest. Um, just had a lot on my plate, what can I say? But we're here today, so let's find something to crack on with. Let me first of all apologize. I think the audio might be a little bit worse than it normally is today as I left the memory card for my voice recorder at home. So we're just going off camera audio. To be quite honest with you, I kind of prefer hearing the birds and everything in the background, but it might be a little bit noisier, noisier than usual. So I apologize for that. Never mind. Um, so last time you saw me route along the edge of my guitar neck using the fretboard as a template and we experienced some tear out on the palm wood. As was kind of expected, the wood, the wood was going to be very prone to do that. Although to be honest, I didn't give it the best of chances. Um, I had the router set to a very low speed, which my way of thinking there was while I was trying to trying to avoid the burn marks that I got on the sycamore top. Um, while that did indeed avoid the burn marks, it does just make tear out much more likely to happen. It's kind of the same concept in my head as you know how you can whip a tablecloth off a table really quickly and get away with whipping stuff out and not dragging everything else with it. It's kind of the same with the router in the wood. It's also not helped by the fact that I'm just using a cheap kitchen for this bit as well. Um, I really could do an investment in proper router bits. Um, I'm very much looking forward now to when we get set up with a an upgraded workshop and I will invest a little bit more in some quality tools, I think. But for the time being, we're making do with what we've got. Um, now, there's a couple of jobs left to do on the neck before I think about fitting it to the body. Um, I'm wanting to do binding down the edge of the neck so I could route into there. Um, I also need to carve the back of the neck and finish off the headstock shape. Um, but to be honest with you, I'm just not quite in the mood to do that today. I thought I'd uh, be damned with continuity and go back to focusing on the body a little bit. Um, we really need to get it up to the stage where it's sort of ready to be glued up to have the neck attached to it and that's something I'd really like to focus on today. Um, if you recall, the inside's a little bit rough. Not that that really matters because no one's going to see it. But with the sort of thought of saving weight in mind, I finally have the little sander I was gonna to use to try and sort of neaten all that out a little bit. So I might have a, have a go with that first of all. In addition to that, the, um, the sycamore top, although it is sitting fairly flat on top of here, enough that I could get away with gluing it. It's not flattest and as time's going on, it is tending to shift a little bit. I mean, I can't actually rock that as it is at the moment. I think because of the weather we've got at the moment, it's almost kind of flattened itself out since I last looked at it. But um, I had considered having a little bit of a go with a plane just to make that even better than it currently is. We've also had a little bit of a problem while this piece of wood's been sat in storage. It has developed a crack down the side there. If I open it up a little bit, you can see that's quite a crack. It's nothing to worry about too much. All I need to do is kind of wedge that open and force some glue down inside and it'll be absolutely fine. But that's another job for today. So yeah, plenty to crack on with. Let's just make a start and see where it takes us. Thank you. 
So after attacking the sycamore cap for a little while with my plane and then examining it with my straight edge, I've come to determine that the sycamore cap itself is actually okay now, but it's actually the wenge back piece that is not level. This central bit is slightly raised in relation to the edges. I'm therefore about to attempt something that's slightly, almost definitely kind of insane. lost the camera at the heat again there but uh, that looks like it's gone rather well I can't even rock that on top where I could before that's the first time I've jointed something with a plane and felt like it's really spot on so that's excellent so I think we're gonna give the camera a rest have a cup of coffee <coughs> dive coughing and then move on to something else. All right, so let's look at this crack in the body. What I've actually done here is clamped down the body over just a wadged up piece of paper, which has created like a hump under where the crack is. And the act of clamping it down on either side has pulled this crack apart. Normally you might use a wedge or something, but that's just something I came up with because obviously if I stuck a wedge in here, it's going to get in the way of gluing. So all we're going to do is try and flood that crack with as much glue as possible. Or should I say a little bit of glue as deep as possible. So while that's been off drying to one side, I just took a piece of scrap MDF, 
and printed out an F hole template onto the onto a piece of paper and stuck it on. Now that actually says I think seven and three quarter inches, but in reality I've scaled it to about six inches. Now by my reckoning that is gonna look about the right size on our top. Certainly wouldn't want any bigger. Um now I did sort of challenge myself to say I wonder if I can actually carve that out and make my own template. Bearing in mind I do not have a scroll saw, um, I don't have a good set of files, I don't really have many decent suitable tools at all other than maybe a Dremel if I wanted to sort of try try and route around with a Dremel. But I, th I know I'm going to struggle to get a really nice template out of that. Nevertheless, I might give it a try. Um, what I'd really like to do, to be quite honest with you, is buy one online. But the only ones I can find available for sale in the UK are the kind of squashed thin line Telecaster kind of templates where the you see, if you see how the bottom of the F-hole there's like a little round circle. Well, on the, on the ones I've seen online, that, that's really squashed into more of like a, like a comma kind of shape, I guess. Um, if anyone knows where I can get a hold of one of these templates before I actually come to do it, bearing in mind that I am in the UK, do let me know. Uh, the only other thing I can think of is some kind of mad operation taking my 335 and a router and trying to use that as a template, and that's just not a good idea at all. Um, unfortunately, after doing that little bit of a glue up job, we had a knock at the door and we had some company who wanted to sit out in the garden and make a lot of noise and talk and everything. And I didn't have their permission to record them while they're talking, obviously in the background of all this. So it's kind of scuppered me filming for the rest of the day, unfortunately. Um, so I'm gonna have to call it a day for the time being. Um, like I said, do let me know if you know anywhere where, where I can get hold of one of those templates. Um, I appreciate we haven't had a lot of videos out recently. There are a few in the pipeline. Um, there's been a series that I've been trying to put together on valve amplifiers, which involves animation, which is obviously quite time consuming. And I want to make sure that's spot on before I begin releasing it. But that is something to look forward to. Also, I think it definitely looks as though we're going to go ahead and migrate to a bigger workshop. Again, that could take a few months to be fair, but by the time we get around to building benches and all that kind of thing. So I guess what I'm trying to say is the channel might be a little bit quiet over the next few weeks, but good things are coming. Until next time, goodbye.